2019 Ram 1500 5.7 Hemi V8. Immaculate one owner vehicle. Very happy with it. It was a builder's vehicle. Oh, well, he, man, he was a builder, but he was the owner of the company, so he wasn't on the tools getting dirty every day, as you can tell. Didn't ever have any kids in the back of it, so it's never had a mark from a car seat. It's never had any food spilled in it. Very meticulously looked after, which I love. Did not want a black one. Coming from a black vehicle, I swore I'd never have another one, but it's just how it happens. We looked at a lot of different second-hand cars, and the one with the train canopy set up that I wanted in my price range happened to be black. So what have we done to it already? Uh, I've already put the, swapped the driving lights with the Land Cruiser. So I've put the bigger blacked out steady lights, which I like the look of better on the big car. Pulled the aerial out of the Land Cruiser as well. We're gonna keep that in the UHF. So I just made a little bracket to bolt under the driving light there. Oh, I like the position of that there. And it also means that from inside the cab, I now have a visual reference of where the front of the car is a little bit better. Um, one negative of this car so far is that the driver's side, the driver's seat sits quite low. So I'm quite tall, so it's not too much of an issue. But yeah, Jess does struggle a little bit. The other issue is how much these wiper blades kick up. So there was no sort of reason that I can see why they couldn't have been a lot lower on the windscreen. And having that sit up there, just it feels like you look through the wiper blade rather than looking over the top of it when you're a bit shorter. So yeah, that'd be one negative. Vehicle already has a mobile booster, the Soulfire Go signal booster. Uh, I'll just show you where we mounted the UHF. The Lex RS unit neatly in there. We are going to get this engineered when the GVM's done at the same time so it can be a six seat, which is handy when we have three kids. So it'll mean we can, yeah, take someone with us if we have to, or yeah, if we happen to be a nephew's soccer game or something we can take them home for the weekend that's just going to give us that flexibility that we haven't previously had um the head unit is rubbish tiny little thing the reverse camera might as well not be there so i've already ordered a replacement unit which is a full fascia unit it's going to replace all this with a big nine inch screen touch screen maps apple carplay android auto all that good stuff so that'll be a massive upgrade in the back, biggest thing with the Rams, dual cab, and they are still a 2100 long tray, and that's internal with this one. So, already got my fishing rod holders mounted up there. It already had the lights built in from the previous owner. The previous owner has towed a caravan with it, so it's a little bit set up for what we want to do. Already has the slimline battery here, um, outlets for fridges, whatever else you want to run, Anderson plugs, which are great, dual battery meters, a red arc. 1000 watt inverter, um, it also has power points already set up, the 12 volt charger and a Red Arc DC-DC. A couple of things which I've had on previous ute setups, you can plug an extension lead in here and that'll run the fridge and everything in the canopy so you don't get a flat battery and also means you don't have to have a lead sticking in and having the door open so you can lock and secure the vehicle. Solar input, toolboxes absolutely everywhere. It also has a full length trundle drawer which is again 2100 long pull out the back so yeah i've got some pretty big ideas with this one so having this much space is going to be great with my previous setups i do love to have a really neat setup where everything has its place everything just works everything's neat and tidy looks great but my downside is that every setup i've had i've used every little inch of space for something and the the flip side of that is that while I have everything I need to go camping, if I need to pick something up from in town or the kids want to take their push bike to the park or even chuck a scooter in, I've got no room for anything. So my business is the sheer amount of space. So I'm going to put a divider right down the center out of signboard. And this side will be a kit kitchen camping setup. The other side is going to be complete open storage so I can shove stuff in whatever and wherever I want. So yeah, this is what we're gonna be chucking in it. So this is the general plan. 80 liter upright fridge this time. Went that way because it does, it's a little bit bigger fridge space. Yes, you have to pack it a bit differently, but we'll get used to that. Also has a freezer, so the kids can have zooper dupers on hot days. We can have some ice cubes for drinks, that sort of thing. The other reason I went with this one is because it has temperature controls that you can set individually for the fridge and the freezer. So you're not going to have any issues with 
your freezer being too cold, your fridge not being quite cold enough, wasting power, all that sort of thing. So stand up fridge, pull out uh, pantry drawer or pantry. I'm gonna put the travel buddy back in from the old car and we're gonna use these Smiko little Roadrunner brackets. So they clip on either side with a brace right across the top and the holes are in the right spot to suit the internal supports on the canopy. So that's gonna be a really neat setup. Two single XTM drawers and we're going to get some tabletop ideas to put in there. So you'll see what I mean about that a bit later. We've got the fold down ladder so we can access stuff on the top really easily. I kept the 270 degree awning off the Land Cruiser. Did contemplate buying a new one, but uh, a full freestanding one, but this one's still very quick to set up and I like the fact I've already got the full tapered zipped walls for that one so I can make it a fully enclosed in area if the weather's really bad. Shovel holder off the cruiser, I've kept that as well. The shower tent that we took off the Land Cruiser to save weight before we went away, we've now chucked that back on. So we're gonna have a really good setup. So all of that has to go in there. So through the magic of editing. So that's only sitting in there for a mock-up, but gives you an no idea of what I'm thinking. Oven's gonna sit up there. Kept the fridge as far forward as possible, so all the weights from the fridge is gonna be there. The drawers are only going to be light sort of stuff in here. I'm only going to have um, sort of like cutlery and pots and pans and things in there. Pantry. These will pull out. And then I've got a XTM drawer which is going to sit on there. So you can work there or it clips on the end and you get that space a bit further out from the car if you want to cook and not get fat all over everything i did turn the door around on the fridge so it opens that way which made more sense this is our little brackets from off-road what is it road runner off-road just got these online they're about 70 bucks i think so they clip in a few little mountings on the bottom of the oven on both sides. Nice strong mounting points. Just sit up the height of the top of the oven. You've got one on both sides and you've got this nice big brace which is going to go across. Keep it all really well tied in. Comes with all stainless steel hardware. So we'll get that all together. And these slide brackets here are the right width for the supports on the canopy. So as you can see, there's a bit of adjustment there, but most canopies have their internal supports spaced quite similar. And that's going to hold my oven in that little niche next to the fridge above the pantry. Um, pretty rainy day here at home. A little bit miserable, but... Yeah, the rain is needed just before Christmas, so we're also trialling our new wireless microphone, so yeah, obviously I won't know how improved the sound is until we get this video edited, but so far the little test we did with the kids this morning was really cool. Um, yeah, we were able, we've got two microphones, so we're able to connect both really simply, and yeah, the kids were... A good 15 meters away and still talking as if they were right next to the phone so that's going to make a big improvement to our videos we hope so yeah but anyway uh back to the build series of the ram we've had a couple of little, little things go on behind the scenes so we'll give a quick look at what we've got happening first thing you'll notice is she's a lot taller so it went up to armadale couple of days ago and had the Tough Dog GVM kit fitted and that's brought it up about 70 mil in the back so it just shows you how sag that was and it's brought the front up about 55 so yeah really happy with how that's looking now it's booked in in a couple of days to get the new wheels put on 
So going a slightly bigger tyre, at the moment there are 275, 60, 20, which is about a 33, or just a touch over. We're going up to a 275, 65, 20, which is just a, just a touch over a 34 inch tyre. Keeping the width the same, just due to the physical size of the car, we're not going to be doing any gnarly gnarly wheeling but still a plenty big enough tire band a 34 that we can bag them out a little bit more with a bit more sidewall as well i was toying with the idea of going back to a smaller rim size having a bit more tire sidewall but yeah just at this stage i do like those rims they do suit the car so we're just going to run those for now the negative on that apart from having less sidewall and not being able to bag the tire out as much is they are a little bit rougher to ride than a smaller rim with a little bit more sidewall which absorbs the bumps and stuff a bit better and they're also expensive very expensive for 20 inch tires i think the the ones i'm going are the maxis razor ats and they're about 620 dollars a tire so and the other thing to keep in mind is 17 inch tires are a lot more likely to be kept in stock in rural parts rather than a 20 inch tire but i guess with all these big american cars and yeah ti y62s and everything starting to come out with bigger rims it will probably become norm in a few years that the bigger tires are just as common on the road so yeah other thing or what we're looking at doing today is we've had a few goodies turn up off ebay got hold of a set of ram blacked out tail gate badges um, so they're the genuine ones you can sort of see here They had these two little located lugs or tags on each letter. That's obviously to go into the hole in the tailgate to locate them so you don't can't put them in the wrong spot essentially. So when I don't don't really feel like drilling holes in the back of the canopy where I want to put these. So I've just cut those off with a sharp razor blade. Um, they have an Avery Denison sticker on the back, so I'm pretty confident that'll stick fine. The other exciting thing that's turned up is the new head unit. So full fascia replacement, Apple CarPlay, all that cool stuff. So that's going to be a massive improvement over the original little one that comes with the Express, which is this tiny little screen there. So yeah, pretty excited to get that in as well. But it is Christmas Eve tomorrow, so probably going to get into drinking some beers rather than putting that in at this stage but the, yeah the ram badges is going to go right there in that sort of little space there that looks a little bit plain in between the jerry can holders so i want to see about getting those on without it without me getting too wet and we'll give you a look at that right oh well, as you can hear that rain's really set in but we'll see how we go filming this for you um, so as you can see on here, I've measured out the distance to the edge of the blue tape of where my outside letters will go. And then I've just got a centre mark to line the centre letter up. That'll evenly space them, theoretically. So we'll see how we go with that. Um, just giving it all a wipe over with a bit of prep sole as well, just to take any wax and grease off it. So... Looks like pretty good quality adhesive. And we'll see if we can get it on straight. So yeah, as I said, I'm going to start with the outside letters. And I've got my mark there to where I want it. Let's start with the outside edge. That's touching down. And I can get it pretty right. I just can't touch the two bottom edges. I haven't pressed that down yet. And that's going to let me smudge it, what, fudge it up or down a little bit if need be. What we're going to do set this set square to the depth. Spot on. And then I'm happy with that. I'm going to 
push the water down and put a bit of pressure on it. This isn't very riveting viewing, I'm sorry, but push that down. I'm going to do the same with the next one, which is exactly the same as the one on the right, and then I'll come back to you. What do you reckon, buddy? What do you reckon? <laughs> is that what we'll do? Is that what we'll do? Yeah. Oh, don't scratch the microphone. Don't scratch the microphone. All right. That's where we are with it. All right, there we go. Finished product. So the reason that I did the outside two letters first was I could even the gap between here. The three letters actually are all different sizes. They're not the same width. So if I was to just start with the center one dead in the center and then space the letters out with the same gap on either side, I would have ended up with a very different gap either side, which would have looked terrible. So what I've ended up with now to even it up, is basically this is slightly off center gives me my two gaps very close so within about five mil and my outside gaps are spot on so probably the pick well you gotta admit she's looking a lot better with a bit of lift under it next up on the mods it's booked in at jacks this morning to get new tires on Going to a 275 65 20, which is about a 34 inch tyre. It's about an inch bigger overall, still well within what's legal. And we're going with a Maxxis Razor AT. So the Coopers, particularly this one, not a lot of wear left on them and they're starting to scallop out pretty bad on the outside. Could have got another 10,000, 20,000 of them tyres possibly, but. Yeah, considering we're about to get on the road towing the van, we're going to get rid of them. Much nicer as that. Next on our little hit list for the RAM build is we're going to replace this tiny little screen with a upgraded 9 inch touchscreen, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all that sort of good stuff. It's a full fascia replacement for the DS model so you take out this section here, you've got to relocate your buttons and air conditioning controls and the rest of it's all brand new. So we're going to get that out now. Pretty simple, if you have a ram you need to get this front cover off. You've got this little rubber that clips in on your coin tray or whatever you'd call it up here. Underneath that is two torque screws. Once you pull those out, you may have one in the back here. It seems to be hit and miss. Sometimes they put one in there, sometimes they don't. Mine doesn't. So all I need to do is pull these two screws out and this will all come off with clips. So much better.
Very cool. All right, quick little update on the ram build. Got it here behind me. So we've just come back from Copen and doing our little test towing the van. Had a few things, obviously shakedown run, so we're going to have a few issues. Had a few things which we definitely wanted to change before we get on the road again next week. One was the big bazooka exhaust tips. Used to finish right out flush with the, where the tow bar is and they were pointed straight at the stone stompers. So that actually burnt the canvas on my stone stomper. Um, so yeah, good to know that's not going to work. So what I have done there is two things. Cut the exhaust back the length of the exhaust tip, maybe 250 mil, something like that, right back to the exhaust hanger. And then also got some angled down exhaust tips from super cheap. So that's just gonna point that exhaust gas and all that hot air down at the ground, not directly at the stone stomper. The other thing was because the stone stomper attachment we had was a clamp around style that used to go around the tow bar tongue. It was the only one that would work with the 200 series with the Kmart bar, it had to be quite low so it didn't cover the indicators and the brake lights on the Kmart bar and also allowed you to get to the, the locks or the latches to open up the swing away. So fortunately, when I ordered my stone stompers, they actually sent me the wrong one. So they actually sent me one of the L-shaped ones that you bolt underneath the tow ball. So I didn't need that, but what it's allowed me to do is I've just cut the bracket off it and I'm going to actually sit it up here on the ram so it's going to sit it up nice and high it's going to keep the bar well away from all my plugs and things so it's going to be a lot easier to plug everything in and it's going to being up high the problem with it where it was before it was right down below the tow bar I actually think it left a gap where it would still be able to chuck stones above the stone stomper so having it up nice and high and then having that mud flap that hangs down I think it's going to be the best solution so what I've done with that is I've actually drilled a couple of holes um, and I'm actually going to bolt that bar directly there. Now, do not recommend drilling a tow bar, but the fact that that's a secondary little mounting plate, I've got no idea why it's even there, but it's got nothing to do with the strength of the tow bar. I haven't drilled into the bar, only drilled into that top little flat plate. So it's not going to affect the integrity of the tow bar and anything like that. Obviously, legal reasons, you can't drill a tow bar, you're not supposed to, and you can't drill chassis, things like that. So I haven't broken any laws, that's all good. The other thing is we had the canopy set up pretty much how we thought we wanted it. So we had the stand-up fridge, which we got from Wagga while we were there, the Oz Trail one from Anaconda, and then we made everything work around that fridge. Um, I'll give you a quick look in here. So you'll notice the anaconda fridge is gone. Reason for that is it was absolute rubbish. Um, probably, possibly okay in a caravan. However, I've got a mate who's got one in a caravan and it's not ideal for him either. He's going to look into putting fans inside it, doing little upgrades like that. But for me, you'd run it, it was just continuously running trying to get cold in that hot canopy. Just wouldn't do it. And You'd get up first thing in the morning and check it. It had been running all night, drained the battery basically, and it was down to about sort of two degrees, one degree, which is where you want it. You wouldn't even open that fridge, and by 11 o'clock, it'd be up to like six or seven degrees, which is definitely not warm enough. Oh, it's not cold enough for beer, sorry. So when you're coming from having an angle where your beer's always on the freezing point, just won't cut the mustard. Um, and the other thing was with it being... A stand-up fridge, every time you open the door, all the cold air falls out and it would go up like four degrees just in that two seconds that you'd open the door to get a couple of beers out. So pretty disappointed in that. So at the moment, it's just sitting beside the lounge as a bit of a bar fridge because I did spend the money and go and get the ram sign on it and stuff, which I did really like. May down the track still look at getting like a Bushman or an Engel upright fridge just because they're a lot better quality. My nephew's got the Bushmans and he has had no issues with that. So we might go that way. But at the moment, the trusty angle's back in. Um, we've put, obviously, the divider wall and all our camp chairs fit there. And then we have another big piece of alley panel going along the back there, which is going to completely box this kitchen living section in and have it completely separate from the rest of the canopy. Also, stop the dog getting in there, all that sort of stuff. 
I haven't been able to get hold of a piece of that alley panel and Bunnings has been sold out, but they have it just back in stock now. So I'm going to go get one of those tomorrow and finish that off um, with that fridge. So once we've got the alley panel on there, it's going to be really hard to get to the back of the fridge to undo the tie downs. And the idea of this fridge was it was going in Jess's car over there. Um, so when we go away and take it for family holidays and stuff, we've still got a fridge. Obviously now it's back in my car. We still want the option so we can pull it out and put it in Jess's car quick and easy. So I've gone one of these transit slide locks. It's basically a big mount that bolts down and you put the feet that come with this kit on the angle and they lock into these four legs. So you sit the fridge down, push it back a couple of inches and it locks in. And then there's a little hidden button there which you press in and it lets the tabs go and you can pull the fridge forward an inch and it unlocks and just lift the fridge out. So there's no ropes. It's really neat. And it's super easy to get that fridge out if I want to chuck it in Jess's car for the weekend. So that's what we're going to do for now. When we come back, we may look at changing the fridge up, but we're going to suck it and see first as probably what we should have done is just use the setup, work out what we want to change before we go and buy anything. But other than that, everything's working really well. We've got the uh, pantry here. Let's see if I can get this open for you. With this pantry as well, these little plastic $2 baskets from Kmart fit in there perfectly. So we're gonna play around with that and make the storage a little bit better in there so stuff doesn't just slide around all the time. Got the oven all wired up, um, tidied up all the wiring in behind here. I've got the TVs now all wired up and usable so we can watch dvds we can put the fire stick in that sort of stuff for the kids the other thing we've done is mounted up the compressor the compressor's in there just made a neat little switch for it at the moment i've just got the air hose reel that come attached with it but i'm actually going to look at a retractable air hose reel tomorrow and see if it'll fit in there like i had in the land cruiser and then we can flick the switch pull the reel out because that was always really handy so but it works really well. So yeah, everything's starting to come together, but that's a little bit of an update. We have changed the fridge. Hopefully gonna finish off that canopy tomorrow. I wanna to get that alley panel. I have a 160 watt semi-flexible panel, which is gonna get sick of flexed on the roof of the canopy. So that's gonna keep everything 100% charged. It's also going to leave more charge in our battery in the car to be able to put back in the van. So at the moment, I'm just cleaning up here and going to get these mud flap or canvas flaps back on. And we'll see what that looks like. Right, so this is how it comes out of the box. You've got two pieces that just click together to make the mounting of the base. Uh, these are your four feet they come with it and they just get screwed into the bottom of the fridge either with your old bolts i'm assuming otherwise there is some hardware that comes with this kit which has some bolts in it so it may even be those but i'll confirm that once these are on here they sit inside the slide so you can sit your fridge on they lock in place like that and on this front one here you can see this little locator once it pushes in in there and the only way to get it out is to push this which will then drop that pin which will come out so we'll get that mounted up get these on the fridge and it should be happy days well it's just started raining here so anyway we got it in once the two pieces click together you've got six screws in the back section oh sorry three screws in the back three in the front six screws in total so that's how it bolts down We've got the new feet screwed on the bottom. So they, they did attach with the four bolts that come with the kit. I imagine you'd be able to use the old bolts off the old feet, but maybe these ones are a little bit longer. These feet are bigger. So yeah, everything you need comes in the kit. So I'm gonna get Jess to hold the camera and we'll slide it in and see how it works for the first time. Since it's got the track on it, you should be able to just get it in the right spot. 
I like it like that. Not bad for the first try. Righto, another day. Um, as you can see, got all the stone stompers mounted up. Really happy with where they're sitting. I reckon it looks really good on the vehicle as well. So hopefully that's going to fix all our problems. Got the fridge mounted on the slide as I showed you yesterday. Now we were able to get hold of our sheet of signboard. So it's an acrylic black on one side, white on the other. Um, it's just really thin aluminium with a foam in between it, but it's strong enough. So about to cut that and put my back wall on finally. So this is the plan. I've got 30 by 30, 1.3 angle iron, sicker flexed and bolted down, or tech screwed down, sorry. And then up the top, I've got these two pieces spaced out and they're notched out. So what it will do, I'll grab this piece here. So this is our top piece, which is what the alley panels going to screw down the bottom. And obviously it needs to have something to hold it secure at the top. So it'll get bolted to the front RHS. It's going to get bolted through that piece. And then you can see I've notched out these pieces. Then I'll tech screw and sicker flex that. And I've left enough gap at the front that the signboard or the alley panel is going to slip up and you won't have to cut it around here so i've still just got to tidy up those cut edges a little bit get those sicker flexed and installed and then we can start working out our measurements for the piece along the back here so it's going to be white on the inside black on the outside i think white on the inside just lightens up that kitchen area a bit and makes it look nicer and the black obviously from the back blends in with the canopy so my plan here is it's going to come all the way to this front edge come down it'll step out go down flush with this carpeted front board and then i'm going to leave this piece longer and have it so it angles and so basically it'll be nice and flat and this piece will just kick out like that and it'll cover all this messy wiring yeah so we'll get into that not um not really doing a step-by-step -step on how to do any of this because there's plenty of canopy build videos and stuff out there that's not really what i'm doing this for just wanted to show you what setup we're going with but if you have any questions on how i've done anything put them in the comments and i'm happy to answer anything and put up some pictures or go through anything in more detail that's pretty straightforward right all done finished it up yesterday because it was pretty late in the day the sun was down low here and it was really glary, so you couldn't really see it. So didn't worry about showing the finished product until this morning. But pretty happy with how it came out. Got the edge nice. Managed to bend this bit so it hides all that untidy wiring got a nice neat finish up the board there and then yeah pretty happy with it finishes it off makes it look nice and neat so you're not looking at the back of the drawers and the back of the fridge and all that stuff um the sticker there is just my business sticker i had it on the back uh, the back window of the land cruiser and i pulled it off and stuck it on our shower and the shed here and actually was able to cut it back quite a bit get rid of all the dusty areas and the unsticky bits around the edge and that's stuck nice now so just going to run that for now just breaks it up um, eventually i do want to get an image made up of the ram um, with the ram logo and yeah cool logo sort of thing so once i do that i might do that whole thing in a big sticker i reckon that'll just really sort of look cool when you open the door up uh, around the other side looks a lot more finished now it's sort of got the splash back in there and it obviously gives this end piece a lot of strength now decided to pull the little black tech screws out and put some big headed five millimeter black rivets in 
just looks a little bit neater, I reckon. And if I do want to sign right that other piece, it's going to be a lot easier. And the because we've got rid of the Oz Trail stand up fridge, we went and got that Ram logo put on there, which I really liked. I was able to trim that up around the logo and around just the ram and chucked it on there just to break up the white a little bit, which I really like. And that looks quite quite sharp. Um, now, this is my job this morning. I've bolted in the air hose reel, so it's just bolted down through the bottom so it's nice and secure. Not going anywhere. So it's a 10 meter hose reel, which is obviously retractable. I'm going to, I've got quite a bit of space behind it here. So I'm going to basically leave it out to its first. Spot like that, leave that tucked in the side and then have the inflation wand on it. It did come with these pre crimped screw on threaded ends which I'm going to use for the other end this one didn't want to but I think I'm going to cut this off leave it just the right length to plug up into the compressor here and then put the fitting on with the hose clamp because otherwise I'm going to have a meter of hose in there which is just looking untidy and doesn't need to be there and it's probably going to kink the hose and that sort of thing so I'm going to do that but other than that that was a super easy install about to put these fittings on now one thing I just wanted to show you as well. So if you've got the ARB style inflators, these sorts of things, um, ARB will tell you that they, theirs is a unique fitting, it's specific fitting to ARB, you can't buy it, that sort of thing. If you go to Bunnings and buy the orange, I think they call them the charge style, so you obviously got the Nido, Nido and those ones, but if you buy the charge style, they are exactly the same as the ARB one. So that's about 25 bucks for all those. So that makes it a lot easier to convert things. And a lot of the time, the ARB fittings are quite limited with variations and stuff to get what you want. So they'll do a full kit there for 30 bucks, which pretty much has, yeah, three females, barbed ends, female and male end, and then three male ends female male barbed so that's a good little kit there and uh, so yeah if you just remember the orange ones are compatible with arb so another quick thing if you've got one of these newer style arb inflators you'll notice or you would have noticed down the side there it's got a little battery icon that tells you how much um, charge is in the batteries it does need a battery or batteries for this digital display to work i've had this one for probably two two and a half years i guess and it's just got to the point where all those battery icons were gone and it was flashing saying it was flat so i thought i should probably change those batteries out before it gets me stuck out somewhere where i need it to put air in my airbags or a tire or something and i just don't know how much air i'm putting in so you pretty much just slip this rubber boot or protector off the top fold it back down pull your hose out of the way and you'll find you've got a little hatch there which has got just two AAA batteries which is awesome most of the time they're a weird little size or they're a button clock battery or something that you're not going to have in, have around so good job ARB for using everyday batteries put that cover back on and then pull your protector over and you use it right to go so this one, as I said, it came from ARB. It has the ARB fitting on it. The one that's supposedly really hard to buy anywhere but ARB. I'm just going to show you because I've finished up now with this air compressor install. So what we've got is we've got the hose coming out of the compressor into the hose reel. Got the hose reel bolted down so it's nice and secure. We've got a 10 metre retractable J-Flex hose reel. And I've also kept the six meter little hose reel, uh, hose that came with the compressor. So that's just an extension. So if I'm anywhere where 10 meters isn't enough, I need to get it to another vehicle or whatever reason, 
I've got another six. So now I've got 16 metres of line that I can use. So that's going to be really, really good. As I said, I'll put the orange Bunnings charge fittings on. And what I will show you now is they're not just similar, they are the same. So you can plug that in. It's going to be hard to do this while I'm filming. Just going to put the camera down for a second. All right, so that's clicked on, and I'll turn the compressor on just to show that it's not leaking any air. Another little tip, so the Safety Dave suction mount, I like to remove the revision mirror and put it up nice and high up there so it's it's where you'd usually look in your revision mirror anyway. It's not obstructing any of the view from the vehicle and it also means that when you've got the, you know, most people stick them on the windscreen down low or in the centre of the windscreen or what, that sort of thing, means that you can't put a sunshade up on the window. So 40 degree days... I like to put a sunshade up and leave the windows cracked a little bit, hence why I put weather shields on. So, yeah. Um, so the big thing with this, which I've had drama with the Land Cruiser as well, actually tried to do the same thing and I had to end up making a mount for it that went on to the Revision Mirror clamp. But with this one, I didn't want to do that because it actually sort of meant that I had to buy another Revision Mirror when I sold the Land Cruiser, so I wanted to get away from that. But the problem is these suction mounts on the Safety Dave windscreen mounts, they're probably great on glass. They probably stick great. I've seen lots of them stuck on glass with no issues, but every time you try and stick it onto that black stuff, it just won't stick. It'll feel like it's stuck perfect, and you'll leave it overnight, and come back in the next morning, and it's fallen on the ground. And it'll do that every single night. And it doesn't matter what you do, how clean you get it, it just won't stick so the solution i came up with is if you go to autobahn or super cheap probably anywhere like that you can buy a windscreen what do they call it a revision mirror adhesive and it's a tiny little packet and it's designed for sticking the metal buttons onto the windscreen so i use a little prep rag give it a wipe and it's an activator in there as well and then put three or four drops of this stuff on that stuck it on there hold it for a minute and it's been on there for three or four days now without a drama so anyone who's having the same dramas who wants to get that stuck up there don't come at me when it's time to remove it because i guarantee it's going to be a prick to get back off but yeah if you choose to do it that's on you well that's the big rig done for now that's about all i want to get done to it before we go away in a few days so we'll get on the road use that setup and see if we need to tweak or change anything Thanks for watching the build video. As I said, it was only a really quick run through on what we threw in the car. If you'd like any more information on anything in detail on how we've done anything, let me know. Always happy to share any tips or tricks or advice. And always, yeah, I know I'm always looking on YouTube for new ideas and ways of doing things. So yeah, but I think this setup's gonna work really well for us. Still got plenty of space. If we wanna go and do a boys trip, we've still got more than half the tray free space. So. I can sleep in there, I can throw kids kayaks in there, I can put kids bikes, whatever I want to do. So pretty excited about that. And it appears like the dog and the smallest human appreciates the TV. Anyway, I only just threw that on quickly to get that little snippet of video. Sorry, Devil. It's okay, Marshall. I kind of expected it. <laughs> Is this where you're sitting for a while? <laughs>